In a mud hut far from town lived an old grass cutter named Keshav. Every morning Keshav cut and bundled tall wild grass. Every afternoon he sold it as fodder in the marketplace. Each day he earned 30 paise. Ten of the small coins went for food. Ten went for clothes and other needs and ten he saved in a clay pot under his bed. In this manner, Keshav lived happily for many years. One evening, Keshav dragged out the pot to see how much money it held. He was amazed to find that his coins had filled it to the brim. What am I to do with all this money? I need nothing more than I have. Keshav thought and thought. At last, he had an idea. The next day, Keshav loaded the money into a sack and carried it to a jeweler in the marketplace. My friend gave me a gold bracelet for this money. I have a lovely one for you, Keshav. He exchanged all his coins for a lovely gold bracelet. Then, Keshav visited the home of a traveling merchant. Welcome, Keshav. How are you? I'm fine. I want a job done through you. Tell me in the whole world who's the noblest lady. Without doubt, it is the young queen of Kapila. I often visit her palace. Do me a favor. The next time you pass that way, give her this little bracelet with my compliments. The merchant was astonished, but he agreed to do what the ragged grass cutter asked. What's wrong with you? Nothing specific. I felt like giving it to someone. Soon after, the merchant found himself at the palace of the Queen of Kapila. He presented the bracelet to her as a gift from Keshav. How lovely! Your friend must accept a gift in return. My servants will load an elephant with the finest silks. When the merchant arrived back home, he brought the silks to the hut of Keshav. What am I to do with such finery? Perhaps you could give it to someone else. Keshav thought for a moment. Tell me, in the entire world, who is the noblest man? That is simple. It is the young king of Nadia kingdom. I often visit his palace too. Then do me another favor. On your next trip there, give him these silks with my compliments. Keshav, are you mad? Please do this help. The merchant was amused, but he agreed. On his next journey, he presented the silks to the king of Nadia kingdom. 
a splendid gift in the town. Your friend must have twelve of my finest horses. Thank you, Your Majesty. So, the merchant brought the king's horses to Kesha. Hey, what is this? This grows worse and worse. What could I do with twelve horses? Hey, what is this? This grows worse and worse. What could I do with twelve horses? I know who should have such a gift. Keep two horses for yourself and take the rest to the Queen of Kapila. Thank you, Keshav. I cannot fathom your mind. The merchant thought this was very funny, but he consented. On his next visit to the Queen's palace, he gave her the horses. Now the queen was perplexed. She called her minister. Your Highness, I was informed that you wanted to speak to me. Why does this Keshav persist in sending gifts? I have never even heard of him. Your Highness, why don't you discourage him? Send him a gift so rich that he can never hope to match it. So, in return for the 10 horses from Keshav, the queen sent back 20 donkeys loaded with silver. Thank you, Your Highness. When the merchant and donkeys arrived back at the hut, Keshav groaned. What have I done to deserve this? Keep two donkeys and their silver for yourself and take the rest to the king of Nadia kingdom. The merchant was getting uneasy, but he could not refuse such a generous offer. He presented the silver-laden donkeys to the king of Nadia. The king too was perplexed and sought the advice of his minister. Your Majesty, I am at your service. Perhaps this Keshav seeks to prove himself further and further. Why not send him a gift he can never surpass? You are right. So the king sent back 20 elephants with golden anklets, 20 horses, with golden bridles and stirrups. Keshav was surprised to see all these. Friend, please do not stop for a minute. Keep for yourself two of each animal and take the rest to the Queen of Kapila. Enough of all this, Keshav. How can I go to her again? Please, merchant, who else can do this favor? All right, this is the last time. This time, the queen was stunned by the magnificence of Keshav's gift. She turned again to her minister. Clearly, this man wishes to marry you. Since his gifts are so fine, perhaps you should meet him. Merchant, take me to your friend. The merchant began to shiver in fear. Worthy queen, do you really want to meet him? Of course, why not? The queen ordered a great caravan made ready with countless horses and elephants. With the trembling merchant as guide, she and her court set out to visit the great Kesha. On the third day, the caravan made camp and the queen sent the merchant ahead to tell Keshav of her coming. When Keshav heard the merchant's news, his head sank to his hands. Oh no! Now I am being paid for all my foolishness. I have brought shame on myself. 
on you and on the queen. What are we to do? I fear we can do nothing. The next morning, Keshav rose before dawn. Goodbye, old hut. I will never see you again. Grass cutter started down the road, but he had not gone far when he heard a voice. Where are you going, Keshav? He turned and saw two radiant ladies. They were fairies. I am a stupid old man. Let me go my way. I cannot face my shame. Though you are dressed in old clothes, you have the heart of a king. The fairy touched him on the shoulder. To his amazement, his rags turned into fine clothes. A jeweled turban sat on his head. Return, Keshav. Keshav looked behind him, where his hut had stood. A splendid palace sparkled in the rising sun. Astonished, he turned to the fairy, but they had vanished. Keshav hurried back along the road. As he entered the palace, the guards gave a salute. Servants bowed to him, rushing as they were here and there, preparing for the visitors. Keshav wandered through countless rooms, gaping at the riches beyond his imagination. Suddenly, three servants came running. A caravan from the east. No caravans from both east and west. The bewildered Keshav rushed outside to see two caravans halt before the palace. From the east came the queen of Kapila and from the west came the king of Nadia. Keshav hurried to the queen. My dear Keshav, we meet at last. Thanks for the wonderful gifts. Thank you, Your Highness. I was asked to send these gifts by a great king. Please excuse me for a moment. He rushed to the king. My dear Keshav, I came to meet the giver of such fine gifts. So it's you. Your Majesty, I have sent all those as I was asked by the Queen to give them to you. The Queen. Who is the splendid Queen? The Queen of Kapila, Your Majesty. Please come and meet her. And so, the King of Nadia met the Queen of Kapila and the two fell instantly in love. A few days later, their marriage took place in the place of Keshav. At last, Keshav said goodbye to all his guests. The very next morning, he rose before dawn, crept quietly from the palace and started down the road. But he had not gone far when he heard a voice. Where are you going, Keshav? Did I not tell you I am a stupid man? I should be glad for what I have received, but I don't want to fool anyone. You are a great man. You shall have your heart's desire. Thank you, kind fairy. The fairy touched Keshav again. So Keshav became once more a grass cutter, living happily in his heart for the rest of his days. And though he often thought warmly of his friends, the king and the queen, he was careful never to send them another gift. Moral When you give without expectation, God takes care of all your needs and fills you with unexpected happiness.
once in the royal city of Kalinga. There was an old woodcutter who lived alone with his young daughter. Every day, the woodcutter went out to the forest to gather thorn bushes, then sold them in the marketplace as firewood. In this way, he earned the bare necessities for the two of them. One morning, the woodcutter's daughter came to her father. Father, we do have enough to eat the common things. But just once, it would be nice to have something special. Do you think you could buy us some cakes? I think I could do that, my dear. I'll just gather some extra wood today. So the woodcutter walked farther that day to gather more thorn bushes. But he took longer than he meant to. By the time he got back with the wood, darkness had fallen. It was too late to go to the marketplace. Sumi, open the door. There was no response. All right, let me sleep outside. woke up while it was still dark. I might as well go out right now and get another big load of wood. Then I can sell twice as much and buy more cakes. So he left his load and went back to the forest to gather more bushels. But again, he took longer than he meant to. And when he got back, it was dark and the door was bolted. So again, he had to sleep at the doorstep. I am too tired, but having worked all day, there is none to give me food. He slept on the door. Just then, a goddess appeared before him. What's wrong, old man? The woodcutter woke up in surprise. Or is it real? Why are you crying? Mother, for two days I have gone out to gather thorn bushes. And for the two days I have come home too late to get into my house and I have nothing to eat. The goddess took some roasted peanuts from her heart and handed them to the woodcutter. Share this with me. Thank you, Mother. If you want your good fortune to continue, here's what you must do. Every week, find someone in need. Then, share what you have. That way, you both will be helped. The Goddess Bank. The door to his house swung open. Father, 
Where have you been? Oh, please come inside. I was so worried. The daughter and her father had a good meal. While the woodcutter and his daughter enjoyed good food. From the extra money he brought after selling his wood. Then one morning, when the woodcutter had gone to the forest, his daughter had finished her housework and decided to go for a walk in the park. She was strolling down a broad path when a carriage stopped beside her. A princess came in a carriage. What a pretty little girl! I'm the daughter of the king. Would you like to be my handmaiden? Yes, your highness. So, the woodcutter's daughter became a handmaiden of the princess. With the gifts the princess gave her, she and her father became quite rich. He bought a nice house and he didn't have to gather thorn bushes anymore. But somehow, he forgot what the goddess told him. A month went by. One day, the princess went on a picnic to one of her father's private gardens and she took the woodcutter's daughter. There was a small lake there. So, they decided to play along. Do you know swimming? No, madam. Even I too don't know how to swim. I'll play in water and come back. I will leave my jewels here. Please take care of them. The princess took off her necklace and placed it on the bank. But when she came out, she forgot all about it. She wore the other jewels and prepared to leave the place. We had a good day here. Yes, madam. Come, it's getting late. We will leave now. A few days later at the palace, the princess looked for the necklace but couldn't find it. You stole my necklace. You must have taken it when we went for our swim. No, your highness, I wouldn't do that. You are a thief and a liar too. I'll show you what happens to people of your kind. Get out of my sight. The woodcutter's daughter ran home in tears. But an hour later, soldiers came to the door. They arrested the woodcutter and carried him off to the prison. What wrong have I done to undergo the suffering, my God? As the sun set, the woodcutter cast his thoughts over all that had happened to him in the past few weeks. All at once, he cried out, Oh, what a foolish, ungrateful wretch I am! Did the goddess ask me to share everything what I have with the poor? Yes, I haven't done it once. Dear Goddess, please forgive this ungrateful man. The next day, the princess had another picnic in her father's private garden. And again, she went down to the lake for a swim. She was about to step into the water when she saw the reflection of her necklace. Oh, I have committed a great mistake. The woodcutter's daughter was innocent after all. By the end of the day, the woodcutter was free from prison and his daughter was back in the palace. From that day, 
every week, the woodcutter always remembered to find someone in need and share what he had. Never forget your past and the promises and commitments you have made that will take you to the right destination. Little deer lived in a forest. He was highly smart. One day, the deer went down to the river. He wanted to take a drink. There lived a big crocodile in the river. Little deer knew that the crocodile might be waiting under water to make a meal of him. The deer had an idea. I wonder if the water's warm. I'll put in my leg and find out. But deer didn't put his leg in. Instead, he picked up a stick and dipped it into the water. Crocodile grabbed the stick and pulled it under water. The deer laughed. Stupid crocodile! Don't you know the difference between a stick and a leg? And he ran off to drink some bear else. Let him come next time. I will teach him a lesson. Another day, the deer went back to the river. There, he saw a floating log. The deer had an idea. He said out loud, If that log is really crocodile, it won't talk. But if it's really just a log, it will tell me. He listened. I'm really just a log. The deer laughed. Stupid crocodile! Do you think the log can talk? Hey! One day you will get caught somewhere. The crocodile planned to trap the deer. He knew that he cannot do it alone. One day when the deer came to drink water. Dear deer, why are you growing thin day by day? No, I'm all right. My friend, there is a big garden behind the lake. There is a lot of fresh vegetable growing there. The farmer who guards the garden is a stupid fellow. As you are very intelligent, you can very easily fool the farmer. Please go and have your fill. Well, that's fine. I will go and taste all the vegetables. You can never return. The next day, the deer went to the garden and was surprised to see the succulent vegetables. Mmm, juicy cucumbers, yummy yams. Snap! Oh! His leg was caught in a snare. The deer pulled and pulled, but he could not get away. Oh! Oh no! The farmer will have me for dinner! Then he saw the farmer coming. The deer thought fast and made his body soft. Well, well. A deer? But he looks dead. The farmer pushed him with his foot. The deer didn't move. Maybe he's been dead a long time. Too bad. I guess I can't eat him. He pulled the deer's leg out of the snare. Then he tossed the deer back into the forest. 
the deer landed with a soft plop. Then he jumped up and ran. The farmer was shocked to see him running. Hey, you tricked me. The deer laughed. Farmer is smart, but deer is smarter. A few days passed. The deer kept thinking about all those vegetables. One day, he went back to the edge of the forest. Mmm, tasty gourds, sweet potatoes. Then he saw something new. It looked like a man, but its head was a coconut and its body was rubber. A scarecrow? Silly farmer, does he think he can scare me with that? I will show him what I am. The deer marched up to the scarecrow. Take this. He gave it a big kick, but his leg stuck to the scarecrow. The scarecrow was covered with sticky sap from a rubber tree. Oh, what is this? Let me go. He pulled and pulled. Then he pushed with his other front leg. Turn me loose! Then he pushed with his two hind legs. They stuck too. Put me down! He pulled, he pushed. He pulled and he pushed. But the deer was trapped. Then he saw the farmer. The deer thought fast, but he didn't have any ideas. Well, finally you're back. He pulled the deer off the scarecrow and carried him to the house. He put him outside in an empty chicken coop. I'll keep you here tonight. Tomorrow, you'll be dinner. The deer couldn't sleep. He didn't want to cook. When the sun rose, the deer just lay there sadly. Then, he heard something. Hey dear, the farmer has caught you at last. It serves you right. It was the farmer's dog. The deer caught fast. What do you mean, dog? The farmer didn't catch me. Then why are you in the coop? Because there aren't enough beds in the house, you see, the farmer is holding a feast tomorrow, and I'm the guest of honor. Guest of honor? That's not fair. I've been his loyal friend for years, and you're just a thief. The guest of honor should be me. You know, dog, you're right. Why don't you take my place? When farmer sees you here, he'll make you the guest of honor instead. Really? You don't mind. Not at all. You deserve it. Yeah. You're not so bad after all. Thank you. The dog lifted the latch and opened the door. You're welcome, dog. Enjoy the feast. The deer ran to the forest. Then he watched from the forest edge. He saw the farmer come out and stare at the dog. Then he heard the farmer yell. You stupid dog! You let the deer get away. The deer laughed. The farmer will have to find a different dinner now. Then he went off singing his song. Never be proud of your intelligence. Quick thinking and immediate action 
is required at all times.